one on one with people. Why, why are you doing that? Didn't really suspend the campaign. That was, that was ABC News's interpretation. You must okay. take that with a grain, several grains of salt. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but you are you, you you have postponed a lot of you're you're not involved in necessarily like everybody else. Some is. some days we do campaign events and some days we do book events. Okay. Because you know I committed to doing book events long before I decided that I was going to do this, and I always keep my commitments. Uh, but we keep all the staff and all the funding completely separate okay. because I know the FEC is all over looking for some kind of violation. So um, we were talking about Islam uh, here in America, and I want to talk to you a little bit about what's it going to take for people to wake up, and what does that mean for us to wake up? What do you do with ISIS and the caliphate now, which, by the way, we were told a few years ago was crazy. Right. But what do you do with it now? Well, I'll tell you what I would do with it. Okay. Um, you know, I, I feel that one of the reasons that uh, they're being so successful with their recruitment efforts is because they have, in fact, established a caliphate. Uh, half of Iraq, a third of Syria, uh, beachheads in Somalia, Nigeria, Tunisia. And uh, they are looking extraordinarily successful. And they're able to offer people who frequently live in pretty desperate situations some semblance of, of prestige in their life and money that they can send to their family. Uh, what I would do is make them not look like winners. Now, how would you do that? Well, the easiest place, I think, to go is Iraq. Uh, the, the government in Iraq is pretty much in shambles at this stage of the game. Uh, but I think it would be relatively easy to take the territories back from them. That would be a huge blow to their prestige. Who do you, who, could you arm anybody? Uh, well, I think we, we would have to put our own people on the ground because, you know, our administration has called for, you know, a coalition. But guess what? Coalitions don't form automatically. They, bef they form behind something. So, also, we have a lot of special forces. We, we have capabilities that are very substantial, uh, but we're not using them. That's, that's one of the big frustrations for many of the generals that I've talked to who've retired. We have the capabilities of doing things, yeah. but our people won't let them do it. What is, where do you stand on, uh, where do you stand with the Kurds? Well, you know, there, there are several factions of the Kurds, as you know. Uh, the, the one that we hear about the most are the Peshmerga. Uh, the PKK is a faction of Kurds that Turkey is at war with. Um, and, you know, I definitely think we should be directly helping them. I think they're an enormous fighting force with a tremendous history, and they have a lot of variations, including Christians, among them. We, we are, uh, you know, the hearings uh, happening this week with on the Hill with Hillary Clinton in Benghazi. Um, I said three days after that happened, it had nothing to do with film. We were arming uh, the people in Syria. Um, I, of course, was called crazy for that. We had some pretty good sources on that. As it turns out, that's exactly what was happening. Now all those people that the GOP even was fine um, arming, turns out they're the bad guys, and we armed them. How do you know who to arm and who not to? Uh, well, it's it's very difficult. I, I think we've done a pretty poor job of maintaining our covert sources. You know, and it was a it was a PC move. It was political correctness, and you know, the CIA and all these people were evil, and you know, we're the cause of all the problems. And we really kind of let that fall by the wayside. That was a huge mistake. Uh, and and we have to have the kind of intelligence that is necessary in order to make the right decisions. We also need to understand that, you know, there's a lot of complex interrelationships uh, throughout that region of the world. And when you go in and you, like, pull out one of the the, the, the legs of the bar stool, <laughs> bad things are going to happen. And you have to be prepared to deal with those. So that was the reason that I wasn't all that anxious, quite frankly, in the beginning to go into Iraq. Um, and, you know, once we got in there, it was terrible to precipitously withdraw. Mm -hmm. That was a problem. But if you hadn't gone there first place, it wouldn't have been a problem. And, uh, you know, Saddam Hussein was actually as evil as he was a stabilizing force there. By the same token, in Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a buffer zone. It is just an important place. And 
you know, I I would not have put hundreds of thousands of troops through there. I would have a, a small force that would give us the ability to do what we needed to do. When we come back, his first day in office and his faith is a more perfect union. Um, he is, uh, I tell you, um, Ben, we, 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 we watch you and we admire you. We pray for you. Thank you. Um, that's what's making a difference. It is. It is. Let me start there. You're a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm a Mormon. Mitt Romney was a Mormon. They haven't even started on you yet. I have seen, seen people try to get you to say, I think you and I, and I'm not talking about religiously, I'm talking about politically and in some ways uh, religiously, believe many of the same things, of the times in which we live. Um, and I've seen them dance around. And I thought, nobody is going for his throat yet. Are you ready for what's coming your way? Yes. Absolutely. They don't frighten me in the slightest. What's coming your way? Uh, well, everything that they can possibly throw against the wall. They're already doing it, and it will intensify because they're looking for something that will stick. Uh, they've been every place I've ever been. They've talked to everybody I've ever known. It's funny when I talk to people, I hear how they're digging. Oh, yeah. Um, but I don't care because there's nothing there. They're coming after your faith, you know. Uh, they're welcome to. I, uh, I have a very good defense against that. I simply ask them a question back when they ask me a question. What is the question? So they say, you, you, you think God created the earth? I said, so you believe something came from nothing? Exactly, exactly how does that work? <laughs> I was just at the I was just at the Mayo Clinic last week, and they were doing some brain scans on me to see if I had one, and they did a PET scan. And uh, as they were going through the results, I sat back in my chair and I said, "I'm not going to ask you if you believe in God or not. I'm just going to say to you, how do you not believe in God? You don't even know how any of this stuff works. Exactly. You're bluffing." I, I am shocked at people, especially in your business, um, their lack of, of humility, I think it takes. Well, particularly knowing how complex the human brain is. Oh, my gosh, how that came out of it. What, we put parts in a shoebox and shook it for five million years, and that came out? There. I mean, a, a promiscuous bunch of biochemicals. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, let me ask you what you do on your first day. You first, the first a minute... You raise your hand. I call for a joint session of Congress, and I make it very clear to them that with this administration, the people come first. The country is up for and by the people, not up for and by the government. We work for the people. They don't work for us. And uh, as one of my first uh, declarations, I'll tell them I will not be signing anything that raises our uh, spending by one penny. You do that for three to four years in a row, you got a balanced budget just like that. There'll be a number of other things, but we're going to become fiscally responsible. Uh, there's 645. I just, again, I listen, we're going to become fiscally responsible. <laughs> I've, never, I've never heard any more, anybody more soft-spoken. And I, I don't know. That's either going to go horribly wrong or it's going to work because it's going to, it's going to work because we have control over it in the executive branch. There are 645 federal agencies and sub-agencies over which the executive branch has uh, governance. And they will all cut their budget by three or any, any, four percent. Let me let me go through some rapid fire here. Okay. okay. Let's do yes or no questions. Okay. I know that's really hard, but let's try yes or no questions. How are you with warrantless NSA domestic spying? Terrible. No, can't do it. Nice. Border fence. Yes or no? Uh, the right kind of fence. Yes. What does the right kind of fence mean? The right kind of fence means what has worked in the past, like in Yuma County, Arizona, a double yes. fence okay. with okay. asphalt so you can get rapidly to the okay. point to point. Okay. And the Border Patrol road. Border agree. Patrol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you person. You, you watch the. You look at the fences that are in in uh, Israel. I mean, those oh were, my gosh. Those were right. I've well. seen the fences. And have, and and I, can I tell you yeah. something? I was at as a journalist. I went to one of their border fences. I got out. You know, they're all raked. Right. The sand's all raked. I got out. And the guy said, you don't want to do that. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to. I'm not. By the time I finished argued with him, 
the border patrol was on me saying, what are you doing here, sir? Right. I mean, it can <laughs> work. It can, and you have to prosecute first-time offenders. You can't catch them, really. Mm -hmm. uh, find companies who hire illegals. Absolutely. Deport illegals. Uh, if they have, uh, if they qualify as illegals, there's, I would give people the ability to register in a certain period of time, uh, and if they have pristine records and they're willing to work as guest workers under the circumstances that we provide, um, they could stay, um, but they don't become citizens and they don't vote. English, some of these questions are a little uh, from, from five years ago or eight years ago. English need to be the country's official language? Of course. Um, do you continue the war on drugs? Absolutely. You do? I intensify it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. How border in Arizona like I was a few yeah. weeks ago? I mean, it's, it's, it's an open highway. And the federal, federal government isn't doing anything to stop it. Okay. Legalize marijuana? I, I disagree with it. Um, would troops, you've already answered this, would troops have gone into Iraq knowing what you know now? No. Um, but you would send them back. You would send troops because of the situation now. Well, you would have the situation if you had No, right. But now, but now, now we have the situation. Oh, yeah. I, ground oh, troops. absolutely. Uh, uh, we need a stabilizing force. force. Uh, or just a... We need a stabilizing force. Which means... But right now it's going to... The longer you wait, the bigger the force has to be. Okay. okay. Um, are, you, are you kind of a guy that... Um, I happen to believe if you're going to fight war, war is kill the other side faster to right. take their breath away. Right, you so save you lives that way. Correct. So are you the kind of guy that goes in, hammers them, and then goes home, or do you go in, you do what you have to do, and then stay there and rebuild them? No, I, I think you get it over with quickly. I, I don't believe in a politically correct war. Okay. Keystone oil pipeline. Absolutely. Drill in Anwar. Absolutely. Uh, drill off the coast. Absolutely. <laughs> Climate change, is it real, man-made, and can we do anything about it? Well, climate always changes. It's either going up or down. <laughs> uh, we do have a responsibility uh, to take care of our environment. That's the real issue. We don't have to make it into a political war. Um, would you have joined um, uh, Agenda 2030? No. Um, national standards for education? Uh, Absolutely not. The closer education is to home, the better the education. Um, uh, shut down the Department of Education. Uh, I actually have something I would use the Department of Education to do. Would it be pack boxes for the State Department? <laughs> <laughs> uh, IRS? No, it would be to monitor our institutions of higher education for extreme political bias and deny federal funding if it exists. I like that. Um, uh, Common Core, yes or no? No. Okay. Um, should the U.S. remain part of the United Nations? I don't like the United Nations, and unless they change, I would not participate. I would defund them. Um, one word to describe the following. One thing the uh, Republican Party has wrong. Uh, their failure to reach out I think, to some of the groups that don't like them. Um, Obamacare, repeal or replace? Uh, I think it has to be replaced and then repeal in that order. Okay, I think we have to do another show on that. <laughs> <laughs> teachers union, one word to describe teachers unions. Teachers unions <laughs> right now are not what they were when they began. So they metastasize into something that is not good. Um, one word to describe President Obama. Uh, someone who does not believe in American values as traditional values. One word. You notice he's not answered any of these one no, words. No, they're all good answers. Good answers. <laughs> uh, I keep trying. I mean, none of these politicians have given me one word. One word to describe Donald Trump. Um, non-traditional. <laughs> came up with the one word. <laughs> uh, very good. One federal program you would cut. Um, but there's a lot of them I would cut. Um,